Friends, I'm Pastor Milton R. Hawkins, pastor of Temple of Deliverance, Church of God in Christ, the church where Jesus Christ is always magnified and never ever is he compromised. Welcome to another broadcast. We worship the Lord each Sunday morning at 369 G.E. Patterson Avenue, Memphis, Tennessee. Sunday mornings, our Sunday service starts at 7.45 a.m. and 11 o'clock a.m. Also, we meet on Sunday nights at 7 o'clock p.m. Tuesday night is our night of deliverance where we take time to teach God's word. That starts at seven o'clock p.m. as well. You will be tremendously blessed by the word of the Lord. Well, today I want to talk to you out of the book of Genesis chapter six and eh, somewhere around verse six on down to verse 13. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping things, fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But this is what I like, verse number eight. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. God made man for his purpose, for his glory, but because of sin, because of that sin nature, man turned the corner. Man started acting in a way that was not godly. Man started disobeying God to the degree that man became so wicked that the creator wanted to destroy the creature. God said in his word he wanted to destroy mankind and just when he was getting ready to do it here pops up a man by the name of Noah and the scripture says Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord don't you know all of us have to believe God before it's too late. It's a whole lot of people out here now. They're saying, where is God? He's allowing all this to occur in the world. Is God real? And you got so many religions. I mean, this is not the format to talk about this right now. It would take too much time. But to those of us who know God is real, we gotta believe him and believe in him before it's too late. We see the economy never like it was before. We see sickness and disease in the land. We see the youth of this generation do not have a respect for the elderly, for their fellow man. And so we've got to believe God before it's too late. Let's go into today's broadcast. The commercial appeal reported a few days ago that a 2006 survey showed that half of all Tennesseans don't believe evolution is a well-established scientific theory. An astounding 74% believe the biblical version of creation is literally true. This past week, we recognized three major events, three major historic events. 
First, the 200th anniversary of the birth of Charles Darwin and his views on evolution. Secondly, Abraham Lincoln, the 16th president of the United States of America, who became a man of greatness, but he rose from humble beginnings. And then thirdly, the NAACP celebrated 100 years, a century of demanding that America make good on its promise to provide liberty and justice for all. You and I have lived to witness much needed advancement, but we have also witnessed unprecedented decline. Well, the book of Genesis is the book of beginnings. It's a Greek word that means beginning and origin and generations. It unfolds the record of the beginning of the world, the beginning of human history, the beginning of family and civilization, and the be beginning of God's deliverance. It's a story of God's plan and purpose for his creation. How many of you know God has a plan and a purpose for your life? We see in the book of Genesis the person, the nature of God. We see him as creator. We see him as sustainer. We see him as redeemer and judge. But we also see the tragedy and the consequence of sin. We also see what it means to be separated from God. Since Solomon said that there is no new thing under the sun, we seemingly are reliving days of old. When God made man, he made everything and put it at man's disposal. But it was not long before man was not satisfied and had to have more. Sometimes having more is not beneficial when obtained the wrong way. America, with all of its liberties and freedoms, is still, I feel, one of the greatest places to live in the world. But sometimes we have not always turned out like God intended us to be. And those of you who are parents, you can relate to that because as a parent, you love your children despite what your children do. But sometimes your children don't turn out like you want them to do. America is suffering now in some great uh, detail because man has taken his eyes off of the God that created him. And man has attempted to survive on his own. God never intended for us to exist without him. Jesus himself said, without me, ye can do nothing. And while Paul was preaching on Mars Hill in Athens, he said, in him we live, in him we move, and in him we have our being. In other words, God wants to be part of our life, and God is going to be there whether you like it or not. You cannot escape from God. I don't care where you go. I don't care if you take the wings of the morning and fly to the uttermost part of the sea. The psalmist said, behold, God is there. If you cover yourself up with the darkness of the night, God said, I'm still there. One person said, if you got in the bed and put the sheets over your head, that your feet would be sticking out. And if you covered your feet, then your head will show. There is nowhere you can hide from God. Notice how God always gives man everything that man needs. He's given man decency and he's given man proper order. He has provided a covering for man in every area of his life.